Yo, what's up guys? Please watch this whole video. There's a bunch of news in it. All right, guys, it's it's finally looking like it's happening. It looks like the Chicago Bulls are finally clearing house. It finally looks like we're gonna get rid of Gar Foreman. It's honestly crazy to say that. You know, there's been rumors hinting at it all season long, pretty much. But recently, there's been a lot more about Gar Foreman, you know, like getting fired or just getting a new title, I guess. You know, I hope he gets fired. I don't really want him to be, you know, change titles. Even though he is okay at drafting, I saw if he does change titles, he'll be like on the scouting team, which isn't terrible. But at the same time, man, we just can't keep moving these players. We need to fire them. We need change. We need a clear house. The Bulls are a laughing stock of the NBA, you know, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people laughing at us. I'm tired of guard packs making dumb moves, not making moves at the trade deadline. We need change. And I guess Gar Foreman hasn't really been with the Chicago Bulls recently. I guess, you know, before all this Corona stuff blew up, he was just mainly scouting and he was mainly away from the organization. According to the Suns Times, they were the first to like break this story of the plans over the All-Star weekend. And the main topics are pretty much guard packs and what their roles will be or if they get fired. And John Paxson will play in all of this. Foreman will absolutely have no seat or any decision making table. You know, he's only keeping the GM title warm right now. And like I said, he's either going to get fired or he's going to get a new title, like sent to scouting or something like that. So it officially looks like guard packs is slowly but surely getting broken down, hopefully. You know, and like I said, you know, I want guard foreman to get fired. We need change. But at the same time, I wouldn't be completely upset if they just made him a scout. Because foreman, he joined the Bulls as a scout in 1998. And he's been working his way up, you know, to be a GM. And he's not a terrible scout, I'll give him that, but I, th I do feel like we need change if we can find better scouts and better GMs. I mean, Gar Foreman did hire Tom Thibodeau, you know, he drafted Joakim Noah, Taj Gibson, and then he, hit, he got a big hit on Jimmy Butler. So he, he has had some good hits, but like I said, he's been in office for like, I mean, since 1998 technically, and we need change. I mean, at the same time, Gar Foreman has made many, you know, bad problems and issues. I mean... He drafted Marquise Teague when Thibodeau wanted Draymond Green, but, you know, that obviously got vetoed. And secondly, Foreman was actually talked into the pick by Kentucky head coach. And that's just, that's terrible to see that our GM was listening to college head coaches at the time instead of, like, his own scouting and research. So it's just, it's, that's really disappointing, honestly, that I just saw that. It's really sad to me. Gar Foreman also pretty much got Tibbs fired, which I, I still don't know why we fired him. Of course, Tibbs overplayed players at the time, but he was still a really good hard coach on the players. And then Foreman was recruiting Fred Hoiberg, and you guys know how that went. The whole locker room pretty much turned on him. And I've been seeing for like a few seasons now that just players don't trust Gar Foreman. They don't like him really. And of course, you know, the Rezanovs or however you say their name are all about money. You know, and obviously he needs change. He knows the Chicago Bulls need change, so hopefully he fires guard packs. You know, the United Center has been way more empty this season, and the fan base has stopped watching less and less. But I guess there's been a lot of rumors. The main reason why guard Foreman is going to get fired or have a change in title was because the final straw came in November, I guess, this season, when the Suns Times reported that former players were very angry when they felt Foreman was a loot towards them when the Bulls honored Luol Deng at home. You know, that kind of surprises me. I mean, Gar Foreman, he drafted some of these players, traded for them, signed them, and he was being not friendly towards them or, like, saying hi to them, I guess. And that's really shitty, honestly, especially on Luol Deng's, you know, when he got retired pretty much at home for the Bulls. That's really sad. And I guess word got back to Jerry. And he was the man that always had Foreman's back, and now he's, he's sick of it. There's been a lot of rumors about the whole front office blowing up, and I'm really happy about that. You know, the Suns' times at first reported that even with the front office changes coming foreman could keep his title or be a scout but they said even that seems to no longer be in play so it does look like the chicago bulls are going to fire guard foreman when the nba season returns and that makes me really happy to see that the bulls are finally going to make change when you know whenever the nba season comes back around but another topic i want to talk about is that adam silver said that the NBA could potentially host a game with like a small group of players in a controlled and safe environment for like charity. It would be like an all-star game. You know, it'd be a fundraiser, like I said, during the Coronas League suspension. So it'd be pretty cool to see like one game, one all-star, you know, type game to give some charity and like raise awareness. 
but at the same time you know all those players better get tested i mean i'm sure they will adam silver is a smart dude you know he's trying to get the nba season back so i'm really happy about that i'm gonna throw up this video real quick of him talking about it and i'd say i'm looking at three different things here one is of course when can we restart and operate as we've known it 19,000 fans in buildings and sort of that's one set of criteria then option two is how would we re sh should we consider restarting without fans and what would that mean because presumably um, if you had a group of players and staff around them and you could test them and you could follow some protocol doctors health officials may say it's safe to play so that's sort of second set of circumstances and then a third option that we're looking at now and i would say all suggestions welcome is that as i sort of beginning of this interview i've mentioned the impact to me on the national psyche of having you no know, sports programming on television and one of the things we've been talking about are there conditions in which a group of players could compete you know and maybe it's for a giant fundraiser or just for the collective good of the people so yeah talking about that it'd be pretty cool to see a you know a game with all players like an all-star type game for charity or whatever like adam silver said so that'd be cool to see i mean it's only been a week without nba basketball and it already has felt like a month you know all sports are canceled it's just it's been terrible man i've been so bored recently you know hopefully the nba comes back soon but who knows man this whole coronavirus is just crazy it just keeps getting worse and worse and I guess the media was talking to Thomas Sadransky about this whole situation. And he said, the way I see it is that the season will not finish and the whole year will be canceled, but it is not up to me. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if that did happen because honestly, I feel like it's just gonna continue to get worse and worse until everything just closes down. But I hope not because I don't know, man. It just, that would be weird. How, who would win the championship, the MVP and all that? Would it just end, you know, I don't know. It's just a crazy time in life right now, and I hope everyone out there is safe. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I can't wait for the NBA season to come back, and it sounds like the Bulls are finally making some front office changes, so that makes me really happy to see. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys go watch my last video as well. It was about the Bulls being interested in Kenny Atkinson. And if the Bulls could f sign Kenny Atkinson and Sam Presti this offseason, I feel like it'd be a huge win. You know, it would surprise me because the Bulls really, they really haven't made any good moves in a while. You know, like I said, change is needed. Hopefully this offseason has a lot of change and the Bulls get better and hopefully make the playoffs next year. You know, that'd make me really happy. It's been a while. But yeah, thank you guys for watching all my videos and always supporting. Have a good one. Uh, that's been kind of tough um, as an individual. Uh, Legs been kind of heavy, you know, very early in the game, and um, you know, just you know, it, it makes me a liability on defensive end sometimes, and uh, yeah, so if I just get my second win back, you know, I know I'm not gonna pick up right where I left off from when I before I got injured, so I just got to be patient with myself and just keep working hard. Has it improved at all since that first game back Saturday? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. It's definitely improved, but it's definitely nowhere near where I want to be. So. Where I was before I got injured, so I'm still working towards that. I don't know what Jim said to you guys, but to us, on Wednesday night, that sort of kind of challenged you guys. How do you respond when it goes? Wait, what do you mean respond? Uh, challenge us physically. Challenge you, to you guys to play more. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, I mean, it's telling the truth. I mean, they, they got a lot of offensive rebounds, and you can't blame them on no one but yourself. You know, that's not a coach thing. That's not. Nobody else but the players on the court. You gotta be, you gotta be tough. You gotta be uh, uh, a lot more physical than we were that game. So, I mean, I responded to it well. Like I told him, he can tell me what it is. Like whenever, however you feel about you know a certain situation, we just have a conversation about. It. Is that why you guys are confident in, in this locker room that with 19 games left, even though you're having a disappointing season, you guys are going to stay on point? Yeah. This ball yeah. On the rails? Yeah. I feel like. I, mean, I feel like we got a lot of good, good players in here, uh, good-minded players who, you know, are all competitors. So I feel like, uh, you know, especially with a coach like Jim, you know, he's gonna push us. And, you know, I feel like we all respond pretty well when he pushes us. What are you seeing with that? Coach?